Hey guys, so the topic for today will be the log file monitoring. Uh, previously in the last videos we talked about uh, quite a lot of stuff like all the installation of the components, uh, the docker, what else we covered, the timescale, Prometheus, uh, XPAT, uh, inventory, host templates, some item agent configuration. So if any of that uh, feels uh, and sounds interesting to you, then just go ahead, open our channel and check the previous videos. But today, yeah, just like mentioned, the log file monitoring, how to monitor your log files on Windows or on the Linux machines. So first of all, you need to remember that the log file monitoring, uh, the native one is achieved uh, with the Zabbix agent. But what's mo most important, you must use the Zabbix agent active mode. It is not possible to use the log items and do the log file monitoring with a Zabbix agent passive item type. So you always must use Zabbix agent active. And uh, let's quickly remind ourselves what do we need to keep in mind uh, for our agent active checks to actually work. Uh, first of all, I already have, uh, just like usual, I have my uh, Zabbix series host in the front end. The version is the recent one, 4.2.1, and I have a CLI. So remember in the agent config file, which is located in Etsy Zabbix, Zabbix underscore agent D dot conf, we basically need to use two parameters. First of all, the server active, which is IP or the DNS name of your Zabbix server or proxy if this agent is monitored by the proxy. So this will be the IP or the DNS name to which agent first of all will connect and request the configuration like what do I need to monitor and it will be a log file in this case and then IP or DNS name to which agent will send the data. And the next one is host name. Host name must match the host name in the front end, like this. This is the host name, Zabbix series, and it is a case sensitive. If I have an upper, uh, uppercase S here in the front end, then it must be also uppercase in the configuration file. Otherwise, you will have your items in the front end, you will have Zabbix server, Zabbix agent up and running, no uh, strange error messages, but still you will not see the latest data in the front end. So remember, must match, case sensitive, and uh, don't mess up. We're talking about a host name, not about a visible name. So that would be the quick review about what do we need to keep in mind for our active checks to actually work. And now let's get into the actual items. I've already prepared the uh, four, in this case, four log monitoring items, and each of them is doing some uh, different things. So you can collect just all new lines in the log file, or you can do some filtering, matching based on the regular expression, uh, extracting some specific uh, output of your extracted log line, display it in the graphs and stuff like that. Let's go to documentation. So just like any other items, if only this page would load, there we go. Uh, just like any other items, also the log item has a full explanation with the examples, explanation of the parameters, what does what in our documentation. And to find this, you need to go to configuration, then item types, and we're talking about a Zabbix agent item type, and here you will find the log item. Um, also very similar is log RT, which is basically the same, the only difference it is for the logs that are rotating, so changing their names uh, based on some conditions, as example, the log file size. But today we're talking just about a log. So log file monitoring, you see quite a lot of parameters that we can use, uh, but it's uh, mostly optional, so not mandatory. The only mandatory parameter is the file, because we need to specify File is the full path and name of the log file that you want to monitor. So it will be var log, uh, I don't know, httpd error underscore log. Then the next one is the regular expression parameter, but you see it's inside the brackets, which means that it is optional. But if we want to use it, then it will be a regular expression describing the required pattern. So we will be filtering something in our log file. Encoding. Pretty straightforward. Uh, max lines, maximum number of new lines per second the agent will send to the Zabbix server or 
proxy. This parameter overrides the value of max lines per second in the Zabbix agent D dot conf. So this is already mentioned in the agent config file and the default value is 20. So each second the log the agent can send 20 lines of the log to the Zabbix server. And uh, I might be wrong on this one, it's not documented, but I'm almost sure that it was multiplying max lines per second by four, and that will be the amount of the lines that agent will read per second from the log file. So each second it can read 80, 80 lines, and it will send only 20 lines to the Zabbix server. And uh, well, actually, Usually there's no need to change this parameter. There's no need to use uh, max lines in the item key parameters and even more to change it in the Zabbix agent config file. Default is absolutely okay. Next one, mode. This is pretty serious. There are only two options, all and skip. And uh, usually in 99% of the cases you will have to use the skip. Because let's say you have some kind of error log which is of course already existing on your virtual machine or physical server for months or even years, and it already has a lot of lines, a lot of error messages, then you decided to start using Zabbix, you've uh, installed the agent, configured the log monitoring items, and if you will not specify this mode parameter to the skip, the first time agent will check the log file, it will check for all the file from the beginning. So it is possible and most likely you will receive a lot of lines that might be like up to year old. And uh, if you have some triggers configured, then you will also receive a lot of uh, false positive trigger alarms about the lines that actually are from the past. When you specify the parameter skip, it means that agent will ignore all the, all the log lines from the history and start monitoring only from now, from this moment. Next one, output. So output allows you to extract some specific lines from the matched lines in the log file. Uh, we'll see that in the examples in uh, my demo items. And max delay is uh, ignore the lines from the log file that are older than X from the moment when we are reading. Uh, again, I don't know any like use case why you would want to use this again usually this is simply ignored so let's get to the front end and i have multiple things here so first of all this one now oh, i will leave it as it is so log file monitoring and let's check the parameters i have i have a location of the file and in all of these four examples i am monitoring my zabbix proxy log and in the zabbix proxy log I even have uh, increased debug level, so it is producing quite a lot of new lines per second. So this one, since I don't have any additional parameter except of the skip, so I just specify location of the log. I don't do any filtering based on the regular expression. I don't extract any output, uh, just skip. So this item will collect absolutely any new incoming lines to the log file. Is it reasonable? Not really. So Zabbix is not a syslog server. Yes, it is possible to collect absolutely any data coming inside the log file, but you see how many new lines it is pr uh, producing each second. And it's absolutely not wise to collect everything from this log in our history tables, in our database. Because of performance reasons, it will take a lot of the disk space and it's simply not reasonable. So what are other options? Let's go back to our items. Uh, yeah, just, just a small note additionally, like log file monitoring that collects everything, type of information will be log. So don't mess up, it's not an American sign, it's not a float. Uh, you can use it as a text, but normally type of information is log. And update interval, Remember, this is best practice to use one second. You might be thinking like, hey, I don't want to put a big stress on my Zabbix server. I don't want to check it each second. I will be doing that each five minutes. But remember, during those five minutes, the log continues to grow. 
And uh, if it produces some new lines that should be captured by the Zabbix like each five seconds after five minutes, there will be already a big chunk of data to send to the Zabbix server. And instead of receiving like two or three lines each five seconds, you will be receiving like 200 log file lines each five minutes. And that single moment, those 200 incoming lines can and uh, most likely will affect uh, also your performance of your Zabbix server. So remember, one second update interval. Next one. So in the second item, I am using a regular expression. And uh, let's check the monitoring latest data, log file monitoring regular expression. So it's this one. And uh, I will copy paste this line. If you are configuring some kind of the regular expressions in, uh, in the front end or any other places, online regex tester. Uh, yeah, uh, basically just type a string and then you can try your regular expression and you will see does it works or not. So let's go back to the front end. Items, my regular expression filtering item. And the only additional parameter I have here, it's still the location of my proxy log, bar log, Zabbix, Zabbix proxy, still the skip, uh, quite a lot of commas because I'm skipping those optional parameters and just a new one single parameter, the regular expression. And I can test it here. Again, just copy paste, delete the quotes. And there we go. So I am capturing and we'll be getting all new lines from the Zabbix proxy log lines that will contain a string processed. Then there will be anything. Then there might be uh, any digit because of the plus and unlimited amount. Values in anything, so this. And again, any digit unlimited amount. So any line that will contain this string will be captured in the Zabbix server by the Zabbix agent. So you can see in the latest data, if on the first item I had quite a lot of uh, values, this is capturing absolutely everything I have in the log. The next one where I use my latest uh, regular expression, I am capturing just a single line. History syncer process zero values in time amount idle one second or syncing history. So now I am filtering. I am not capturing all the incoming log lines. I am filtering based on the regular expression. What else do I have? Back to the items. The next one is log file monitoring, regular expression, and the output. So this, in this case, I am using another parameter, uh, output parameter, which specifies the capturing groups of my regular expression uh, parameters. So again, I have a same line, but uh, the log item key, location of the proxy log, Zabbix, uh, var log, Zabbix, Zabbix proxy.log, and the regular expression is slightly different in this case. See, uh, output here, processed values in this, and the new one is, there we go, just added uh, capturing groups. So I am capturing same lines, so the same uh, processed values in with the digits must be there, but I am adding in a capturing group this digit because I want to extract the time amount spent for to uh, sing the history, which means that here in my item parameters as a this parameter, I specify which capturing group do I want to display in the output. If I would add zero, uh, backslash zero, it would display in the latest data just this part. Everything that matches from my regular expression. Since I've displayed here backslash one, so the first capturing group, I am getting this one. See, uh, it even displays as group one. There we go, the digit. And we can verify that in the monitoring latest data. Third item, there we go. Uh, this one, because of the 0 0.000, I still have to use uh, text or, or the log type of information because it rounds to the zero. But normally, you can uh, extract the integers and even draw the graphs from your log file monitoring items. And the last one, 
Uh, what do I have here? I don't even remember. So this, first of all, the same log, uh, Zabbix agent active, the location of the proxy log file, the regular expression that we are capturing and skip. And he, see here I have a capturing group zero. So this one, the last one, will capture everything from my regular expression. But additional thing here is that I've added the log time format. So it is possible to not only, uh, let's say, capture the log line itself, but also extract the timestamp from the log. And here you see this first, no, this first part, 23077, is the process ID which wrote this uh, mentioned log line. Next one is just a separator, then it's year, month, date, separator, hours, minutes, seconds, and nanoseconds. Here it's not relevant for us. So if we want to extract it, we need to use also the placeholders. And you can check the example here, like the format is like this, years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds, everything else serves as a placeholder. So first one, two, three, four, five, six digits are not the timestamp in the process ID and the separator in the log file. So I need to, uh, I need to use a placeholder. So I'm using X, one, two, three, four, five, Till I am get uh, till I get to the actual beginning of the year. Then use for egrex uh, months days again a separator. Here this one it also serves as a separate separator. Hours minutes seconds. That's it. That's all you have to do. And then in the monitoring latest data, I see additional column which is actually the local time. So you can see there is a timestamp when the value was collected and the actual local time, which is the time of the log line written to the log. Yeah, something like that. And you can see in the previous items, I have not used it. And that's why the log local time column is empty. So just long story short, that would be a quick review how you can monitor your log uh, logs in a Windows in a Linux environments through the Zabbix agents. Just remember that all the monitoring is done by default by the Zabbix user. So make sure that your log file, that Zabbix user can read your log file. So there are at least read permissions. And also if you are using a Linux machine, if it has SL Linux turned on, then by default, like 99% SL Linux will not allow the Zabbix user to read the log file. So you will have to uh, make an exception in the SL Linux policies. And uh, that's about it. Hope you like it. And uh, yeah, see you in the next videos, guys. See you after a week. Uh, comments, questions, likes, subscribes, all, all the good stuff. And uh, thanks for your time. Goodbye.